Alright, the book of Jude. It's the book right before the book of Revelation. It should be pretty easy to find. It's one of the shortest books in the Bible. But uh, it's a powerful one. Alright, now we've been talking... Uh, Last week we, we really got into talking about the, the, the fallen angels. And it's one of those uh, concepts that's really not taught that much in the church. It was, it was taught widely all the way up until about the uh, third or fourth century. And then uh, Augustine and uh, his crew uh, decided that they wanted to change what the scripture uh, meant. And so they started to plant these bad seeds into the church. So this, this type of thing wouldn't be taught. Okay, but w- what we're talking about is uh, last week we talked about how, when, you know, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and without form, and then there was darkness over the face of the deep, and all this stuff happened as a result of a rebellion against God. And so these angels uh, who he called sons of God, because he considered them sons, he said, Call them the sons of God, sons of Elohim. And some of them stuck with him and some of them didn't. And according to scripture, after the, uh, you know, some rebelled before the flood and some rebelled after the flood. And according to Genesis 6, uh, one of the things that they did, they rebelled and they decided they were going to go down and take wives. They looked up on the wives of the daughters of men and they said, man, these women are beautiful, you know. And so they left what the scripture called their first estate, and they went down and they began to marry and co-mingle with the women. When that happened, it created a new species of giants, part Elohim, part human. And so when you, when you begin to study that, the whole influence of the Old Testament and the wars that God was fighting I had David fighting and, and had, the, had, his, had Joshua fighting. When you really study that, then you understand that he was fighting against the seed of the sons of God. It was him and his sons against the sons that the, 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 the angels had created. And so when you see David going up against Goliath, and when you see Joshua going into, into cities and destroying the whole city, he said, kill all of them. He was destroying all of the influence. He was destroying the, 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 the seed of the, of the angels and the people that followed them wholeheartedly. And when you look throughout scripture, whether it's in Egypt, or whether it was in Babylon, or whether it was in uh, the kingdom of Assyria, or, or Media Persia, or Greece, or Rome, it really doesn't matter. All of the kings of those land always said that they were descendants of gods. They believed that their ancestors came directly from what they called the gods. So you got to study this stuff. You got you to see what's going on. So Greek mythology to them was not mythology. These beings were real to them. Half man, half goat was real to them. So there was something that went on in the past that we failed to understand because we don't want to study these type of things. But there was, there was uh, two things going on. Uh, you know, there was the nation of God trying to rise up. And then there was a nation of, of uh, Lucifer trying to rise up as well. And so we see this great war, cosmic war, going on from the beginning of time. And it's still going on now. And Paul tries to warn us. And he says stuff like, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But you're wrestling against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and, you know, and wickedness and high places, spiritual wickedness and high places. And so he, set, he tells us and he sets in, uh, uh, in our mind into where the battlefield is. It's not you that I'm fighting. It's what's influencing you. That I'm well, I'm fine. Yeah. All right, so we look then, we get to the book of Jude. And just to pull out some more evidence of what happened, I wanted to go over these scriptures with you. 
So in verse 5 of Jude, he said, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. See, now he, he, he wanted them to remember because they forgot. And ain't it odd that he put this book right before Revelation, right before all this chaos about to break out? Right before he, he, he counseled the churches, he said, I, 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 I want you to remember something. Maybe this will help you get your mind right. I need you to remember, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, watch this, which kept not their first estate. They, they left their first place that they lived, but left their own habitation. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness until when? The judgment of the great day. So they're going to be loosed again. These, these angels that rebelled initially, the ones that came down and slept, these were the original ones. Came down and slept with the women, created the original giants on the earth. He locked them up in chains. Bound until they are judging. Now we just come out of Revelation, so y'all remember when we talked about one was locked, uh, chained up on the river Euphrates. Y'all remember that? And he's going to allow that one to be loosed. Okay? So we see uh, evidence of the scripture that these things are going to happen. All right? And, and he's going to allow it because Satan is trying to round up everybody. All of the old gods. All of the powerful gods of old, once they're loose, they're going to think they got strength. And they're going to rule the earth for three and a half years. Y'all get that, right? They're going to wreak havoc on the earth for three and a half years with what we call the Antichrist as the leader who is indwelt by Satan himself. He's going to rule. And I was reading in the book of Daniel, it said he's going he to whoop the saints like Christ. He's going to put a whoop in the scripture, say, on the saints. For a little while, it's going to look like we're losing. Right now, it looks like we're losing, doesn't it? All right, so he, he does this. He said, even as Solomon and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. And watch this. Even as Solomon, now he just got you talking about the angel. And then he said, even as, I looked at the word even as, and it said, just like, in the same manner, that's what they were, even as, that's what even as means, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the says uh, about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Now he just said the angels, then he said, and just like them, in the same manner, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities around them did the same thing in like manner. Then he tells us what all of them did. He tells us what what, what the angels did. He tells us what Solomon and Gomorrah did and he tells us what the cities around Solomon and Gomorrah did, giving themselves over the fornication. How can an angel fornicate? Unless he comes down in human form. Now you, you remember the scriptures always tell us that angels can come down in human form because he said be careful you know, when you're entertaining because you might be entertaining angels unaware. And so we know from scripture text that the you know, messengers of God can come down in human form. Jesus did it. Jesus did it on several occasions. He came down as a messenger. The word in, in Hebrew for angel is just simply messenger. And so he came down as a messenger when he was leading the army. Joshua's army. Y'all remember that? He came down as a messenger when he told Abraham, I'm about to destroy Simon and Gomer. That was him. He came down as a messenger when he wrestled with, with Jacob. He came down as a messenger when he stood before the bush with his father's voice speaking out of the bush directly to Moses. He came down in human form. So Jesus all throughout the Old Testament was coming down in human form giving a message to his people. Directly giving a message to his people in physical form. And we're, we're going to study that in the weeks to come. We're going we're to study the scriptures that prove that, that Yeshua Jesus was coming down in physical form, presenting himself to his people, giving them a message, and then leaving. Just like he did with Adam in the garden. 
They were expecting him because he always came down. And he said, that, he said that the voice of God, the word of God, was walking through the garden. You know, yeah, y'all, y'all got to see that the word of God was walking through the garden. The voice of God was walking. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Without him was not anything made it, that was made. The word was walking through the garden. The message in the form of Christ. Not born yet. Y- y'all, y'all with me? He wasn't born yet. He was just manifesting. That's, it's a difference. Okay? And so, so Christ manifested, just like these angels manifested, came down and slept with the daughters of men, created these huge giants. And so they did it before the flood. Those angels got locked up, but then the scripture said, and then they did it again afterwards. And that's where, after the flood, he had three sons to go out. Uh, Noah did, Shem, Japheth, and... Uh, and uh, Ham, and they populated the world, and, and it was ended up being 70 nations. And the scripture said that God put an angel over each one of those nations. And then he begins to talk to them, I think in Psalm 182, we have to look at it again, but he begins to talk to those angels that he put over the nation, and he said, y'all are just as bad as, 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 uh, as, as the nations. Why are you allowing these things to go on? So even the angels went corrupt. These are the principalities right now that's over us now, over the world now. The same principality because he put one over each dimension. Y'all remember in the book of Daniel when Daniel was trying to pray to God? And then it took 21 days, I think, for the angel to get back to Daniel and tell him that the Lord is answering your prayer. He already answered your prayer. He said, but it just took me a while to get back to you. He said, because the prince of Persia. We, we had a fight in heaven. Y'all, y'all got to see, this, this is what's going In the heavenly realm, he said, I was coming back to give you an answer from God. And I, I, I couldn't because I had to fight with the, with the, with the principality over that area, that, that Persian area. He didn't want me to get the message to you, and he fought me. And I couldn't get away from him. But the archangel Michael, he said, came and helped me and, and fought, all, fought him off. And I was able to come and give you the message I'm giving you now, but your prayers have already been answered. So, y'all, y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? There's hindering spirits that's trying to keep what we say to God getting to God. Yeah. That's why he tells us in the scripture, one can chase a thousand. If, we, if, we, if, if I'm just by myself, I can chase a thousand. Demons. But once he sees me operating in the power that God gave me, and I don't chase off a thousand, and I'm doing pretty good now. I chased off a thousand. I'm walking in the presence of God. I'm doing what he wants me to do. And then he sent 2,000. Well, I can't do this thing by myself. As a one man, I need, I need somebody to walk in agreement with me. And that's why he said two can chase 10,000. That's a lot for two, ain't it? So it depends on then how many how many demons do uh, how many demons do you think that that that's over Athens? Is it just a few, or is it just, or is it many thousand? So, but all we need is a few, because he took twelve and turned the world what upside down. We talked about it the other day, and we'll go back over it again. One can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. If two can chase ten thousand, three can chase a hundred thousand. If three can chase a hundred thousand, four can chase a million. If four can chase a million, five can chase ten million. If five can chase ten million, six can chase a hundred million. If six can chase a hundred million, seven can chase a billion. If seven can chase a billion, then uh, uh, eight can chase ten billion. If eight can chase ten billion, then nine can chase a hundred billion. If nine can chase a hundred billion, then ten can chase a trillion. If ten can chase a trillion, then eleven can can do ten trillion. If eleven can do ten trillion, twelve can do a hundred trillion. That's why it only took twelve men to turn this whole world upside down. I 
I just want to see what power we have if we walk in the authority that God gives us, trusting him in the manner that he said for us to trust him, believing in him as the scriptures say, not all this other stuff, as the scriptures say, who he is. Okay? But if you don't understand you fighting against uh, principalities in high places, there's no need. Because I'm going to take my stuff out on you. You offend me, I pull my gun out, you pull yours out, we kill each other. And the same demon that was messing with me and you moving on to the next person. Because we don't understand. That's why them demons didn't want to leave when, they, when Jesus walked up to that man and he had all them de- he had a legion in him. He said, well, my, our name is Legion because we are many. And one man. And, and uh, you know, they stood up and admitted who they were. Then they started begging. They said, please do not torment us before our time. Do not throw us in the pit. And he's talking about the bottomless pit that we talked about in, when we, when we were in the book of Revelation. They hate going to the pit. Because according to other sources, on, on, after the flood, only a third of, of those that were slain uh, uh, during the flood are allowed to be on the earth at one time. Only a third. And they didn't want to go back to the pit. They like being free and roaming the earth. Have you come to torment before our time? We know we got a certain time that we're going to have to go. But have you come to do it before time? It ain't time yet. Okay? So that's what we are, are, are wrestling against. These people that we call in uh, a mentally ill is a demon. Some of the issues we're dealing with is demonic. He said, some of the stuff y'all are dealing with, he said, you ain't going to be able to get rid of it without fasting and praying. I mean, I know some of the stuff you can shake through just regular prayer. Some of it you can shake, you can praise your way through, and some of it you can do. But some of this stuff, you ain't going to be able to shake, whether it's on you or one of your family members. You're not going to be able to shake that thing without fasting and praying. Yeah, if they want the demon, yeah. I mean, because it's, you know, you can, you, can, you can chase a demon off of somebody that don't want the demon. But if they want it, it ain't going nowhere. You know? And even if you are that power where you can cast out a wanted demon, it's coming right back. And that's why, you know, we had to follow, you know, just don't go around doing it, according to Scripture. You have to understand the purpose in what you're doing, and you have to understand the will of God in doing it. Because if you cast out a demon out of somebody that don't want it gone, and and you you speak you know and speak to it and it leaves and you cast it out and, and you clean that person up, then he's just gonna go out and get seven more. And then the condition of that man will be worse than before. So, but if it's somebody like the man that Jesus ran into who, who, who went to Jesus while the demons were in him, he was wanting to get rid of these things. He couldn't do it on his own, but his, his own will, he went to Jesus, but then the demons spoke. There you are, because you had the power to cast it out, and they wanted it gone. Like you said, an agreement. Okay? So we want to be, we want to be more powerful. And, and really, you know, it's like, really, they're not worried about some of us really now. I mean, because all they got to do is get somebody to look at us funny and they got us. Come on, man. We're done. We have, we have no uh, 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 power because somebody looked at me funny. Think about it. What you looking at? Why you looking at me? What you at? And that's all it takes for us. That's all it takes. So, the, the, on this lower level of, of, of defense, he got most of it because we worry about what we wear and how people look and what they say. And it's, it's really on a small level of spirituality that that's all that it takes to hinder, hinder us. 
I'm going to go in debt because I want people who don't even like me and care about me to, to, to I want to impress them with what kind of car I drive, what kind of clothes I have. I want them to think a certain way of me, and I want to show them something. Well, okay, well, what are you going to show them? Back to seven, yeah. We don't even know who we are in Christ. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven is right. We don't even know what that means. And he said, then all this other stuff be added to you. Then he tells us, he said, well, I'm a, I can, I'm, he said, I, 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 I hope, I think what Paul said to that book, and I had to find the scripture, he said that, that you prosper and be in good health, even as your what? Soul prosper. Y'all see the duality right there? He doesn't want you to prosper with stuff without your soul prospering. Because if, if you prosper with stuff, it's going to overtake your soul if your soul don't prosper. So what God said is, I'm going to give it to you, but not until your soul prosper. Because your soul got to prosper before you get the stuff. Because if, you don't, if your soul don't prosper, Process before you get the stuff, the stuff is going to overtake your soul. And then, and, 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 and you're going to think that stuff comes through you. And you're, going, you're not going to have any gratitude. No, no gratitude. And it just, it, it, immaturity. Yes. And I got the stuff, but my soul. And so that's why when God gets ready to bless his children, he'll give you stuff, but he's going to give you a little tribulation to go along with it. <laughs> Well, I can prove it to you. It's in the book. So, so you can get the stuff, but you're going to have some tribulation along with it to keep you balanced. Yes, <laughs> You can't get away from it. He said, but Paul said, listen, Paul said, I want to know him. In the fellowship, in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering. You can't, you can't break the two up. You can't break the two up. Jesus couldn't have all power over heaven and at earth <laughs> until yeah he had suffered he had suffered until he had all suffering. Y'all get that? And so since we'll never experience all suffering, we'll never experience all power. But. The sign that we're here is that when suffering comes, when he gets through working us, we come to the same conclusion that he came to. That's the sign, y'all. That's the sign of, of, of the sign of suffering. How we come out of suffering is an indication of what spirit we're following. If I come out of my suffering bitter and I'm angry with God and I don't trust him anymore, then I wasn't here. Now, I'm saying you can't go through that temporarily and come out of it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if the final conclusion of your matter, when it's all said and done, is that you're angry with God at the end of your life over how he's done you, and you refuse him because you're bitter and angry with him, because if he was God, he wouldn't allow this stuff to happen. Then you wasn't here to begin with. But if at the end of the day, when you have gone through all you've gone through, and you're about to die like Paul was about to die. And you can say, you know what? I fought a good fight. And I ran a good race. You can say, all things worked out for me. All things worked to the good for them. To love the Lord and call according to the purpose. All the good stuff. And all, you can be like David and say, it was good for me that I had been afflicted. Yeah, because if I hadn't been afflicted, I would have never known the goodness of the Lord. Y'all, y'all see what I'm saying? Or, or, it counted joy. It counted all joy, you know? It's a different mindset. It's, it's a different thing. Even Job, what, Job, what did Job say? He said, though he slay me, 
Yet what? Will I trust it? Now, it's a different mindset. I don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through. I don't understand why I'm hurting like I'm hurting. I don't understand why people hate me like they hate me. I don't understand why family members do me like they do me. I don't understand why my own children don't even like me sometimes. I don't understand why the folks on my job always come against me. I don't understand why church folks always act the funny with me. I don't understand why it just seems like trouble is all around me all the time. I just don't understand it. But, but, but somehow I believe that through all of these things, somehow this stuff is going to work out for my good. It's a conclusion that you have to come to as a believer because that's the same conclusion that Jesus came to when he was in the garden and he said, is there any other way that we can do this? He didn't hear from heaven. And he said, nevertheless, not my will. Thine will be done. And he was willing, after he made up his mind, he was willing to be led to the slaughter. Y'all got to see that. Knowing he was going to be slaughtered. And he was willingly went because all things work for the good. Y'all get what I'm saying? And he died and went to hell. And in hell he suffered. But all things work for the good. Y'all, y'all, y'all see what I'm saying? But then on the third day, because he had suffered all he needed to suffer. And he had went through all he needed to go through. He said he was quickened by the Holy Spirit. And when, the, when, when, when he was quickened by the Holy Spirit, the scriptures say, them angels that we talk about that locked up down there, they said he started preaching. Now you know you're in bad shape when you see Abel one ever had the opportunity to get the Holy Spirit put back in them once they got down in the hell. And once he shook off my sin and your sin and everybody else's sin, and it was clear that he didn't have any of his own, that the Holy Spirit was commanded to go back into him because he was the perfect vessel, and the Holy Spirit went into him, and he began to preach by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and so the whole underworld who had been fighting against him for 4,000 years, who had rebelled against him even before that in the heavens, who thought they had him when they got Adam. And they thought they had him when Noah came out. And they said it was a new beginning. And they thought they had him. And then he created the nations. And God put angels over the nations. They said it was a new beginning. And then, then, people, then the angels rebelled against him again. They said, we got it. And then, then he said, well, God said, that's all right. I'm going to go find me a man. So he went out and found one man, Abraham. And he said, I'm going to make me a nation out of this one man. And I'm going to put my special nation to the side. And I'm going to raise them up. And they're going to be different from any other nation in the world. He said, I'm going to forget about these nations for a while. And I'm going to raise up my nation. And he raised up a great nation. Raised up a great nation. And he said, this is mine. This is mine. And they went into Egypt and then they failed. And he sent another man. He said, well, I'm going to send another man, Moses, and I'm going to give him some hope. And he, he raised up another man, Moses, and, and he brought him out with a mighty hand. And it looked like here they are about to prosper again. And he leads them out, and they part the Red Sea, and they go out there and look like God about to take this thing over. And the people are rising up with him, and they go out in the wilderness, and then uh, they get the wilderness of sin, and then they get hungry, and then they fall. But then God raises him up again. He gives him 40 years in the wilderness. And then he said, I'm going to raise up another man. He raised up Joshua. And we're going to raise up this man. And we're going to go in and we're going to conquer the promised land. And they, and they took over Jericho. And they went across the river. And they killed all these giants and all these Nephilim and all of the offspring of the giants. And they went in and they conquered the promised land. He said, but I'm going to leave a few of them in there just to try them and see if they're for real. And they rose up as a great nation. And then, then they fell. Then they said, we want to be like the other nation. We want a king just like the other king got. They found them a king that looked like the other king because they said that, that, that Saul was tall and handsome and, and everything just like the other king. He was big. And then they said, yeah, he, he can hang with them other kings and them other nations. And, and, and so they got him a king and it looked like they was on the rise and then the king fell. Then he said, well, that's all right. I'm going to raise me up another king, David, who, who has my heart. He, he's after, he ain't got it, but he's after my own heart. And I'm going to raise him up. And David went out, and not only did he kill Goliath, but his, him and his mighty men were responsible for killing the last four giants. And it looked like now we're getting rid of all of the offspring of, of the giants, and we killed the last one, and they got rid of him. And the scripture said they killed that last giant, him and his mighty men. Satan himself rose up against David. And David got scared and he began to count. 
So David failed. That's all right. See, uh, the promise to Solomon. That, and so I'm going to raise up Solomon, your son. And it's going to be through your son that, that I'm going to make sure that, that, you know, that we keep this thing going. So he raises up Solomon. And Solomon is the wisest man ever to have lived. He, you know, because if you're smart, that means you can get through this thing all right. Right? Because that's, that's all it takes is, is smartness, wisdom. You don't need no power. If you're just smart enough, you can weasel your way through this thing. So he raises up Solomon, and Solomon conquers everything, and there's peace on earth, and everybody comes to Solomon, and, 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 and then Solomon started letting his wives just lust after his wives and get all the wives, and uh, I think he had 300 wives, 700 concubines, something like that. And he had a 1,000 women, and some of them worship other gods, and he's like, hey, well, that's all right if you want to put this up, and that's all right if you want to you know, put this thing up over here. And, and he lost track of himself. And the nation fell when he died because he messed up. Then the nation was split. And it looked like those angels and, and, and all of them, they, were, they just kept winning. Every time God made a move, they made a move. Every time, every time God brought up a man that looked like he was going to take this thing over, then, then, then Satan would come in and, and he'd make a counter move and it looked like they would fall. You know? and, and, and it was just a chess match all the way for 4,000 4, years of human history. It was a chess match. God would raise a man up and then they would take him down. And so hell was full of all the people that God had raised up, and then Satan came in and took them down. And so God said, well, i got to go do this thing myself. He said, sit here on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And so he said, is anybody that will, that will be able to go? It's been 4,000 years. Can anybody go? He said, it's all right. Send me. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book to do your will. And so he comes down on earth, and Satan is bold, and he's bodacious, and he said, I beat everybody you sent down here for the last 4,000 years. I got every one of them, and if you come down here, I'm going to get you too. And so Jesus comes down, and he tries to kill him before he can raise up. He takes Herod to try to destroy him, you know, because the angels have been singing, you know, holy, holy, holy. Yeah, you know, and they, they, all the heavens are, uh, are praising it because the child has been born. And he said, uh uh-huh. He said, we can go and kill him from the womb. So he flees into Egypt, and he preserves him. And he, he stays quiet for a few years at 12 years old. He walks into the temple, and there he is, and he's, 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 he's debating with, with the sages, and, and, and they are amazed at how this 12-year-old boy knows the scriptures and all this stuff. And then God had him pull back. He said, I don't want you to say nothing else for about 18 years. We're going to keep this thing quiet. He said, because the law said that you can't rise up until you're 30 years old. And so he comes out, he, he, he raises up, and he's 30 years old, and he begins to go out and perform miracles. He goes out, and, and, and the heavens open up. Now, you've got to understand that, the, that all of the angelic beings of the world hear God say this. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. It said that the heavens split. And the word that's used when you look at it in the Greek is in, in, in the Greek sept, uh, sept, uh, Tuagent, it's the same word that was used when the waters were parted. The Red Sea is the same word that we use. So the heavens were split open like the waters of the Red Sea. And the Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit came and rested up on him like a dove. And at that moment, Satan said, Okay, I'm going to get him too. And Jesus went into the wilderness and Satan got started. And he said, Just like I, put, I took your, your, your children down uh, in the wilderness, I'm going to take you down in the wilderness. I'm going to use the same tactics I used against uh, Adam that I, uh, you that I used against Adam to bring him down. I'm going to use the same tactics against you that I used against Cain to bring his brother Abel down. I'm going to use the same tactics against you that I used against Abraham when I, when I, when I tried to bring him down. I'm going to use the same tactics against you that I used to try to get Isaac and bring him down. He said, all of them sitting in hell right now, and I'm going to make sure you're going to be sitting in hell too. And so he challenges him in the wilderness, and he goes, and they go back and forth. But Jesus goes back and uses the same scripture that he had told the Israelites to use before they went into the promised land. He said, I'm going to use the same scripture that if you had used them, you wouldn't have never failed when you went into the promised land. But I'm going to use them. And he said, and then he began to quote the same scripture. He said, no. He said, a man should not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so you see this challenge going on. So, so he said, well, okay, well, I, he, I didn't get him like I got everybody else. But I'm still going to get him. And so he, he moves on and he begins to heal folks. And, and, and now Satan is getting a little shaky because now he's seeing him healing folks. And he's thinking in his mind because God revealed the whole plan to Satan. 
that now he said he's going to heal everybody in the world and he's going to take over my kingdom. Not knowing that Jesus never wanted your flesh. And he was using it. It was a chess move. He was a chess move. He was healing folks in the flesh to make th- Satan think that that's what he was really going to do. But he was showing us in the spirit what I'm doing in the flesh is what I'm really going to do in your spirit. But Satan couldn't get it. And so he said, man, he said, then, then he had the audacity to go. Jesus did and stood on the very mountain that, that the angels had rebelled against God. He went to Mount Hermon. He went to Bashan. He went over into the area where they called the gates of hell. And he stood there with his disciples. And he said, who do you say I am? He, he got in their spot, their holy ground. And he said, who do you say I am? And they said, you are the Christ, son of the living God. Then he had the audacity to go up on the mountain and then transfigurate himself in all his glory on top of their holy mountain and declare himself to be God. On their mountain. They said, no, we got to get rid of this dude. And so it wasn't long after that, they got him. And they thought they had him because he was like, Satan was like, checkmate. We got him. Just like we killed everybody else. We got you too. But he didn't understand that this particular death. See, when you get in a habit of doing something and winning, you think that that same move is going to work with everybody. He had killed everybody else, but everybody else had died with their, with their own sin. Jesus didn't die with his own sin. He didn't understand that the Passover lamb without spot and blemish was a picture of our true Passover lamb. If he had known that, he would never have crucified the Lord. And so he crucifies him, kills him, he goes to hell, and he thinks he got him on the first night. He got caught up in his own tree. And then when the Holy Spirit came back in and quickened Christ, he said, checkmate. I got you. He's going to give some of y'all ten cities. He's going to give some of y'all five cities. And some of y'all ain't going to get nothing. You'll be saved, but the scripture said you will be lost. Why? Because we're not, we're not sacrificing. So you got to understand that we, 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 can, we can talk about the reward, but the reward, there's a price to pay for the reward, and that's the giving up of your flesh. He said this is the least you can do, the least you can do. Reasonable service is to present your body as a living sacrifice. Quit falling out to the flesh, fall out to the spirit. And so when we get here, and we begin to see the whole plan of God. And we, we can see how he plays this great cosmic chess match for 6,000 years. And Satan thought he was winning at one point. And then when Jesus got up, he knew then, game is over. I ain't got but a short time. And he's about to wreak havoc on the earth. So I don't want you to think that just the thing about to get worse it is over because at the worst moments in history is when God was making his greatest moves. Y'all, y'all get what I'm saying? Y'all think about it. When, when Pharaoh started killing all the children, he was making the greatest move ever God was. He was raising up Moses, putting him in, in Pharaoh's own house to be raised. While he was trying to kill Moses, he was feeding Moses. While he was trying to kill Moses, he was, paying, he was paying the nursery bill for Moses. While he was trying to kill Moses, he was putting Moses on his lap and bouncing him on his knee. And the very thing he was trying to kill was in his own house. And he was raising that which was going to kill him. In his own house. Check. Check me. Y'all see what I'm saying? So God allows these things. He allows it to go on and on and on. So he could sneak his son in them. Because when you get used to winning one way, you think that's the way it's going to be all the time. Then God flipped it on him. He didn't know what happened. All right? Then in Colossians 2 and 8, I want you all to read that. We're going to get out of here. He said, let no man beguile you of your reward. Y'all get that? Colossians 2 and 18. Let no man trick you out of your reward. In voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. 
This is Paul talking to. Intruding in those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. There's a realm that we don't understand. Spiritual realm. People are worshiping angels, thinking they're gods. This is what Paul was trying to warn. But don't let no man mess up your reward that call you to follow after angels that's calling themselves gods instead of following after true and the living God. All right. So again, right there, any questions?